Good Monday morning. And yes, I know it's Tuesday. I'm going to start calling this Monday or somewhere in the proximity morning. Um, just uh, it's a busy, busy time. Jacob and Allison, our youngest son and daughter-in-law are moving to Atlanta and we're kind of helping babysit while they get all of that prepared. And so it's just been a busy, busy time. And yesterday got away from me. I didn't do Monday Matters. And so here it is. Tuesday. We're doing Monday Matters on Tuesday. Hope you had a great uh, weekend. God blessed you on the Sabbath and continues to bless you through the course of this week. We're moving into the 4th of July where we celebrate, it seems to me like we celebrate the real beginning of summer and uh, what God's doing in our nation. I hope that you will join me in praying. Uh, God's still at work. America's still a great uh, land and God's not, uh, he hasn't stepped down off the throne. And so we're just praying together. I'm praying for great revival in our land. I believe God can do that. And I'm, you know, I don't pray that for me. Um, I pray that for my, you know, I don't even pray it for my children. They're adults, they're grown. I pray for my grandchildren. I pray that God would change the hearts of our, of our leaders, that God would move our country into a different direction uh, for the sake of my grandchildren. So that has nothing to do with Monday Matters today. Uh, this is a time where I take just a few minutes to talk about something that makes your life hopefully uh, happier, healthier, and a little bit holier. And today I want to talk about the problem of proximity. Uh, the people that we are closest to, both in terms of relationship and just in terms of geography, the people that we spend the most time with, our, our spouse, of course, our children, the people that we work with, uh, church staff members, the, the people that we are closest to are often the ones that while we love them the most, they can get on our, our nerves the most. Uh, I, I jotted down a couple of things about them. No one knows me better than those people I'm really close to, but honesty from those people feels like more of attack, uh, an attack than uh, almost anyone else. Uh, no one loves me more, and yet Sometimes, because we are so close, no one considers my feelings less than those people that I'm closest to. And no one is more of a partner in life than, of course, my spouse, my co-workers, the, no one's more a partner. But in many, time, in many cases, no one feels more like a, a, an opponent more than those people that I'm closest to. When we are close, we're in, when we're in proximity, there are things that can happen that just make those relationships very, very difficult. Uh, I love the Bible verse that says where two or three are gathered together, one of them is going to be a pain in the neck. Uh, that's just, that is just the way it is. Again, whether we're talking about marriage, whether we're talking about uh, all the people under one roof in a household, whether we're talking about everybody that shares office space together. The problem with proximity, here's what happens. After we've been together for a while, we lose reverence and respect. We, uh, we, we are, we're behind the scenes. We know, we, we see their faults and foibilities and, and failures. And so we lose reverence and respect. We begin to take each other for granted. Uh, we assume a lot. Well, they understand how I feel. They, they, they know I didn't mean that. And so we begin to take one another for granted. We get irritated easier. We're, we're just together more. And one irritation builds on another irritation, builds on another irritation until before you know it, Doris says good morning and it just bugs the daylights out of me. Uh, we are less inhibited to voice our complaints because we are closer, because we know one another better. We, we feel like we can voice our complaints more, which is, it's good to be honest but there are some times where we, where we miss great opportunities to be loving and supporting because we're, we're less inhibited to voice our complaints. And I lay down somewhere. Well, I don't see it, but I'll, I'll find it, I'm sure. I, I lay down uh, these five things that I think are, are very, very helpful in those, uh, with the problem of proximity and those close relationships. So I would encourage you today, people that you work with, people that you go to school with, people that you that live under your same roof, particularly spouse, to put these five things into practice. Uh, number one, make a conscious effort to see the good. 
just decide, you know what? I am not going to just see the bad. I'm not going to see anything. I'm going to see all the good things that this person has done for me. I'm going to see all the positive attributes that they have. Just make a conscious effort to see the good. Number two, be intentional about complimenting. Uh, I talk a lot about the, the complimentary sandwich. If you have a criticism you need to make, pay a compliment, then make the criticism, then pay a compliment. Be intentional about, about compliment. You know, you really did a great job on that project. I want you to know how much I appreciate that. Uh, it took a real load off of me that you were willing to do this. Uh, don't, don't take it for granted that they know your appreciation. Be intentional. Number three, practice patience. Patience, patience, patience. Why is it I can be so much more patient for that person that's in front of me in the shopping, uh, in the Walmart uh, line than I can with my children uh, when they're running around the house? Practice patience. I, 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 what I need for people to offer to me, I want to offer them patience. Number four, speak the truth, but speak the truth in love. I, one of the most Amazing verses in all of Scripture is Paul's admonition in Ephesians to speak the truth in love. And we fail when we forget either side of that. If I just placate, uh, people please, never tell the truth, I don't help them to get better. But if I'm constantly critical, confrontational, and don't speak the truth in love, then it's it just kind of goes over their head. Speak the truth in love. And then number five, this. Remember your first love. Uh, Jesus says to the church at Laodicea, you've left your first love. Remember your first love. Or maybe that was the church of Ephesians. I don't know. Uh, return to your first love. Remember why you appreciated them so much. When I first started working in this office, man, I appreciated these people. I was excited to be here. I was glad to be a part of this. And now I've forgotten. Return to that. Problem with proximity. When we're close to people, both relationally and geographically, they can get on our nerves. So what we need to do is be very, very intentional about connecting with them in a way that's helpful, uh, makes us happier, and perhaps a little bit holier. Well, thanks for being a part of Monday Matters on Tuesday today. I hope you have a blessed week. I will see you next week. Uh, we might say something about the 4th of July. Uh, remind me to do that. Uh, every day you can go to Facebook or Instagram and see a little statement that I make about roughly about this thing that we're talking about. And if you don't mind, uh, like, subscribe, all those things that you're supposed to do. I'm trying to build up kind of a following so I can uh, know what to do with this content stuff. God bless you. Have a great, great day.